In this video, I am going to unbox the Motu Ultralight MK5 audio interface. And I'm going to show you how I get that set up on both PC and on Mac. Ready, set, let's go. So here we go. I'm going to open this box. You do that. Ah, back here. Use this straight edge. Get that done quick. Okay. So already have a lot going on, a lot of reading to do. Oh, they, they already have the instructions right there on the top of the box as soon as you open it. So that's kind of cool. Documentation. Oh, get a whole magazine with it. See, that's what I'm talking about. This is an unboxing experience. So this little magazine is all about interfaces and software. That's funny. Give me more things to consider to buy, I suppose. And to be clear, I do not have a relationship with Motu. Uh, so that what I mean by that is, is I did definitely get this with my own money from the shop. Have some more documentation from M Music Technology about digital performer software. Good. I'm actually not using digital performer. Ah, and more about Telefunken microphones. Um, cool. Could be in need of a new microphone someday. But right now, this is where I'm starting. So already, not a bad, not a bad experience. I'm just going to... And got some nice foam here. Those that are interested in those things. Now the good, now the good, now the good stuff. Right. So I'm just going to put that here. And before I get into that, see what else is in the box. It's high quality, it's high quality, it's high quality. That's high quality foam, people. User guide. Great. We have our USB-A to USB-C cable. Our USB-C to USB-C cable. And I'm imagining, of course, this is the power supply or power brick. As well as various attachments for various national locations. So the international adapters for the power cable, but the primary power cable is US style or the attachment anyway. Cool. So I'm going to need the EU attachment. Ah, there we go. So I'll put that together. And put this lovely box behind me. Below me. Leave the magazines on the table. Okay. So I'll just quickly go through this process. Get rid of this plastic. Good looking stuff. Very well made already. Okay, and there's instructions here to unlock it. I need to twist it. So let's see how that goes. Hmm. Oh, okay. So I press, there's a button here. There's a little button that you can press down. So you press that down, and then you twist and it comes right off, which is nice. Let's see. And now I will put this one on. <laughs> there. Okay, so I've locked that in there. It's not going anywhere. That's great. And for today, since my computers are pretty much only taking the USB A connection, I won't need that one, but I will need this one. 
I'm the type of person that before I even buy the gear, I've already downloaded the manual online and started figuring out how to use it because I figure as soon as I get it, I want to be able to dive right in. So I've already kind of done that. Let's open this up. Get rid of this plastic. Okay. Got some instructions here. We'll get to that later. Wow. I mean, my Motu Ultralight MK4 was definitely super solid to the feel and to the touch. Uh, you know, it's quality piece of gear. In this case, I feel, I feel the absolute same way and maybe even a little bit stronger. I mean, maybe it's just because it's new, but it really, it feels super solid and kind of sleek. Yeah, but uh, it looks very familiar to the other device. I'm looking forward to getting the MK4 back and actually looking at them side by side and, and feeling the difference. Yes, I'm going to take this off. Wait, did you hear that? I hope you heard that. Beautiful. This is what we're working with. All right, so here we are in my PC and a lot of the steps between PC and Mac are similar, but there are some that are different when it comes to the PC. So that's why I'm recording here first, but I'll also show you a little bit of how it went in the Mac too. First things first, this card came in the box and it is the get started card. So uh, it's telling me to go to motu.com slash ultralight dash MK5 dash start. So let's do that. I find it so interesting that they have instructions everywhere on this thing, on the box, on an extra card, in the user manual. It's pretty cool. Thank you for purchasing an MK5 audio interface. This web page has everything you need to get started and get the most out of your ultralight MK5. System requirements. So I'll just click on that just to see what it says. Strange that it's giving us the M2 tech specs, but I'm guessing that it should be the same for the M2, the M4, and the Ultralight MK5. So be sure to take a look at the system requirements page, maybe before buying it, make sure your computer's good. So I know that I'm okay. I'm not gonna go through all of that. Let's get back to the main page. You can download the user guide, which I've done already uh, on my Mac at least, and so I have it there, but I will probably get it here too. I've already watched these videos, but if you're new to the device, make sure you watch these. Uh, in this case, uh, I would be dealing with the Windows, so now let's download the installer. I'm just going to put that to my downloads folder. After you download the installer, you might as well go ahead and get registered. Uh, so you click register here, you make sure you log in and register your device with the serial number and everything. And then you'll be able to download some software. I'm going to skip that part because all I care about right now is getting the most out of my device. Now I am going to Go ahead and get it set up. Click next. Yes, I accept the agreement. Read through all of that if you want. Let it work. And it says that we need to restart the computer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and we'll be right back. 
Okay, so I've just restarted the computer. So I've pretty much done everything that I need to do software wise to get started here. I'm just going to double check. I want to see if this QMix 5 was installed on my computer or if I need to do that separately. Motu. Bam. There it is. Okay. Good. Here we go. Watch me do this. Okay. I just plugged in the USB. And yes, the device did turn on. And now this mic that you're hearing me on right now is a USB mic. And I actually have it going through uh, the donation where it's called voice meter. But what I am going to do is I'm going to take this time to switch over uh, to the MK5. I find it interesting that the MK5 already set itself as the output device for my computer. It changed all by itself. So it has chosen the MK5 as the input and output on my computer. Now I just need to double check all the other settings. Here we go with the setup for Mac. Go ahead and download the Mac installer. And then you're going to open the package and you're going to follow all the instructions to install the software. Now, somewhere along the way, your computer may stop. It's going to require that you access the security settings in your system preferences. So here you see where I've done that. It stopped. I go to my security preferences and then I have to enter my code to allow the application inside my Mac. After I allow the application, the install will complete and I'll have to restart my computer. In your sound preferences, select the MK5 as your input and your output device and open up the audio MIDI setup to select your MK5 as your input and output device. It's a new day. I needed to take a little bit of extra time to work with the interface in real life instead of just approaching it as a tutorial. So right now you are hearing me through the ultralight MK5 through my Blue Yeti Pro microphone via XLR cable. And what you see here in the QMix 5 software is that I have the phantom power on. I maybe might have my gain a little bit too hot, maybe when I get really excited, but it's not too bad. It's, it's right about in an area that I'm okay with as far as levels go. In order to get sound through the system though, I needed to just have an understanding of how to use these little buttons here. So when I want to hear things through my main monitors, I just have to make sure that this blue box is checked. I also have to make sure that in the mix window, main mix window, that this uh, volume fader on the microphone input would be up. Right now it's down because I don't want to hear this through my monitors. It's just for headphones or just for things like Zoom or recordings like this. All right. So I do have it up in my headphones and I would be hearing all of that there. Okay. But uh, otherwise, one other setting that I made a, a change to that's pretty important here is the microphone input as it goes to the USB host, I set that to post effects. The reason I did that is because I want to be able to hear my compression and my EQ uh, or the gate that I put on here so that when there's noise in my background, you don't pick that up. Like somebody's coming in my door right now. Uh, babe, babe, I just need two minutes of silence. I'm just finishing recording right now. So I have it set to post effects, even though the default 
uh, would be pre-effects, like you see these other lines, so that my processing comes through. Here's a little peek at my processing. I just have a bit of EQ, uh, and I have a bit of a gate and some compression that just gets on there right when I get into the, the peak areas. Yeah. So you should be hearing that out there where you are uh, because my recording software is picking up my mic that way. In order to hear my computer audio, I had to make sure that I picked up the fader, that I pushed up the fader inside the QMix software in order to hear it. So for example, if I had this all the way down, this computer USB main one and two, and I were to play Spotify, I wouldn't hear anything. Uh, now, right now I have my computer audio going directly into my screen recording software, so it won't make much of a difference, but I'm gonna just go ahead and play it right now. Okay, and now let's take as a look you see, at the QMix 5 software back on my PC. The QMix 5 software, we have a channel just for that. And I can mute that. Or solo it. Either way. But that's what would be coming out of my main monitors, which you are hearing a little bit of because it's probably bleeding into the microphone right now. So I'm just going to bring that down. And you may still hear it possibly through the, uh, through the recording software. I'm not sure, but I just turned it down so that you can see that I can affect it from here. All right. So, that's how that works. This video went much longer than I intended it to. Thanks for hanging in there with me. I'm going to come back with more info for you later, but for you Mac users, it's really just the same process. You install the software, but you actually have less settings to deal with once you get to the QMix 5. But more than likely, you will need to click a few buttons inside the software before you get your full audio out. So that's all for now. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you on the next round.